Good day everyone, this is Pauline Santiago from the Baker Circle. Some of you know me as Doc P. We are on day 7 of making our own sourdough starter. This is our 7th day. We need our day 6 starter, our discard container, and the same things we have been preparing. The kitchen scale, our choice of unbleached flour, our spatula, and filtered water. We have continued to use our Joshua Weisman protocol with a small twist using only half the recipe so we will not have a lot of discards. Half of uh, day 7 recipe uh, is shown here. No? Those who want a printable version of Joshua Weisman's protocol may scan the QR code. Take note we only need a very small amount of starter from day 6, which is only 12.5 grams. For day 7, we steer our day 6 starter, leaving only 12.5 grams in our bottle. So this is how 12.5 grams of starter looks. Uh, the rest ordinarily joins our discard bottle. By, but I actually set this aside as uh, this starter is almost mature. We add 50 grams of water to our starter, 50 grams of flour, that is again a one-to-one -one hydration or one-to-one -one ratio of feeding at 100% hydration. For this, I did not tear my scale and just added the additional 25 grams of all-purpose flour to the 25 grams of rye. That's why you see it as 50. We stir the bottle, clean the sides, close the cover loosely. Okay. Uh, most recipes will call for 100% hydration. It simply means you feed your starter equal amounts of water and flour. You can vary the flour you feed. It does not always have to be what you started with. I find that if my starter is a little bit sluggish, unbleached rye flour and or wheat flour, whole wheat flour, will give it a kickstart, but will make the starter a little bit more on the sticky side, while bread flour and all-purpose flour are easier for the yeast to break up and will be a little bit more on the runny side. You can, of course, combine your flours. Okay, again, we mark the flour on the bottle. For this one, I showed you the typical rubber band and how it is used. I stop using this as the rubber band sometimes, or maybe often in my house, get dislodged. Uh, I actually prefer labeling with a strip of paper with my notes about what I fed the starter, the ratio, the date, and the time. So uh, in about 12 hours, this is how my starter looked. There was evidence of uh, rising more than twice. The arrows point to um, the level where it climbed on the bottle. So I set the rest of the starter aside. I did not include it in my discard bottle because this is already mature starter and I will keep this in the ref for my security if something happens to what I'm feeding now. For those who starter do not double, continue your day seven protocol until your starter would at least double in volume. The protocol calls for feeding 12.5 grams of starter left in your bottle and feeding it 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. You notice we do not like to transfer to clean bottles. This is because of the precious yeast already living in your beaten up container. If you are not ready to use the starter, Joshua Weisman recommends you feed your starter daily, every 12 to 24 hours, just repeating what you did on day 7. That is, if we use half the recipe, 12.5 grams of starter can be fed 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. Again, that is a 1 to 1 feeding ratio at 100% hydration. Okay, but I do not do this as you will get endless discards if you do it this way. Since the starter is now somewhat mature, 
my day 7 or mature starter goes to the refrigerator to sleep. I did not include this in my discard jar as I would like to be able to get this for my micro feeding for a future bake. As I was planning a trial bake to show you that the starter already works at day 7 or 8, I just set aside 20 grams for tomorrow's bake and kept the rest of the mature starter in the refrigerator. So meet Dr. Doe. Since our, since our starter was just fed daily at that, a single feed would have been sufficient. I plan to start my SD process, baking process in the morning, um, or start my process shortly after lunch. In the beginning, you need to get to know how long it takes for your starter to rise after being fed and at what ratio. I fed our day 7 starter 1 is to 5 is to 5, getting only 20 grams of starter. I fed it 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. I used this proportion because this was how my sleeping starter usually behaved. I feed it 1 to 5 to 5 and it will peak in the morning. But I missed the peak. So I decided to refeed. I got 20 grams of the starter. I fed it at 1 is to 2 is to 2 feeding ratio, which means I fed it 40 grams of flour and 40 grams of water. The rest I transferred to join the mother vessel in the ref with the mature starter. This one peaked in about four hours. This is how my um, Levan now looked. The Levan is the starter and what you feed it and then you're about to use it in your bake. So I saw that my starter was ready. So I proceeded to do auto lease. This is my water. This is my flour. And this is how my auto leased hydrated flour looked like. Okay, so I waited two to three hours using foolproof's baking process. So this is her complete process. Um, I will not go into the detail, but pretty much it's auto lease, add the levan, add salt, table fold, a series of laminations and stretch and folds, bulk ferment, pre-shape, bench rest, shape, cold retard, and bake. Okay, this is... The sourdough I baked using our day 8 old starter. So it works. So you can use it now for your bakes. Okay, what if you're not ready to bake right away and you kept your uh, starter in the refrigerator sleeping? So how do you wake up your sleeping starter? Usually on day one, I will get a small amount, about 5 to 10 grams of the starter. Feed it 100% hydration. I can decide to feed it 1 is to 2 is to 2, 1 is to 3 is to 3, or 1 is to 5 is to 5 in these examples. So if it's a 5 gram starter, I will feed, and I plan to feed it 1 is to 5 is to 5 ratio, I will feed 5 grams of starter with 25 grams of water and 25 grams of flour. Or I will feed 10 grams. If I want to feed 10 grams at 1 is to 3 is to 3 ratio, I will feed 10 grams of starter with 30 grams of flour and 30 grams of water. Now for day 2, Usually, I uh, prefer feeding my start, my sleeping starter, the starter that came from the refrigerator, at least twice. No, but some of us have done feeding it once. And it also happens to me sometimes. Sometimes my day one starter, especially if, it's if it just came from a bake, even if it sat there for about two to three days, usually the uh, starter, especially the more mature ones, can sometimes surprise you after day one. But to be sure, I'd like to build up on day two. Building up means I do not have any discards. So if my recipe needs 150 gram of levan, I will take my day one starter, which is, for example, for the example here, I will use my 55 gram starter, the starter I fed 25 grams flour to and 25 grams water to. The 5 gram starter started 
as 5 grams then ends up as 55 grams. So I will take my 55 gram starter and feed it at a 1 to 1 ratio to get a little bit extra. So that's 55 gram starter, 50 grams of flour, or 50 grams of water. So uh, I will have at the end 155 grams of uh, starter. Now, if, for example, my recipe needs 200 grams, I end up using my 10 gram starter that I fed 30 grams of flour and 30 grams of water the day before. And I feed the 70 grams from day one with 70 grams of flour and 70 grams of water. So usually I scrape all of this uh, and use this in my bake. If you want to bake with discards, however, uh, and you want to create some discards, you can go ahead and uh, discard half of your day one starter and then um, put a lot of flour based on what you need and then use the ones that you need for discard and use the ones that you need for your bake. Okay. Um, if I find that my starter is a little bit more sluggish, discarding somehow seems to help. No? Then if my starter is sluggish, I will also usually uh, include a little bit of rye, maybe 10 to 50% of rye, or a little bit of wheat flour, maybe 10 to 50% of wheat flour, and then uh, add white flour, like bread flour or all-purpose flour, to the feed. Um, white flour, like bread flour and um, uh, all-purpose flour, are actually easier for the yeast to digest. No? But the rye flour and wheat flour gives it a kickstart. If their starter is um, from room temperature or was just fed the day before, usually one feeding is sufficient. If, if the starter came from the refrigerator, I feed at least twice. The amount of starter requirement dictates feeding so that I don't have discards. I only purposely create discards if I want to bake discard cookies for my dogs or maybe my own sardo discard cookies. Okay, otherwise, I have no discards already. No? Either scrape all or leave scrapings. Remember, we were using just 12.5 grams of starter. Uh, in your bottle and then you feed it and you will see that you will get some activity out of it. Then, so I will scrape all or leave scrapings and feed for another sardo starter culture. Okay, wrapping up. After seven days, today is our last day. When we started, we set our goals. What did we set? Well, that we hope we will have a mature starter at seven days. If we use dry and all-purpose flour, according to Joshua Weisman's recipe, uh, I was able to prove to you that we can use it at day 7. Uh, I missed the peak so that I used it at day 8. No? But we have a mature starter at the end of a week. If your starter is not mature, we know how to make the starter mature, which is just to continue with your day 7 protocol until it will um, at least double in volume. You know now how to maintain or feed a starter. You know what microfeeding means. You know how to build up to create a levan for your bake so that you will not need a lot of discards. Okay? I encourage you to start trying your hand at baking your own sourdough. Um, these are some of the examples that we used uh, to learn our own sourdough techniques. This is Foolproof Baking, Bread Code, Autumn Kitchen, Pantry Mama, Joyride Coffee, and even Joshua Weisman himself too. Okay, and there are many others. No? You will have your own favorites after you start uh, watching them and trying to get your hands dirty with making your own sourdough uh, bread. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. I hope while well, we were uh, able to lead you or guide you through making your own star sourdough starter and starting your own sourdough bake. Just ask questions in TBC 
and there will be a lot of us who are very willing to answer your questions. Thank you very much. This has been a pleasure for uh, me from P. if you don't know that yet. You can look for me in my IG and you can also ask me questions at TBC. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good day.